Hello and welcome. I am Annette Reeder from the biblicalnutritionist.com and today it's all about coffee. Yes, are you a coffee drinker? Are you not a coffee drinker? We're going to talk about the health benefits, what's the best coffee to buy, should you drink coffee, what are the cautions of coffee, and just a little twist of where did that term, cup of joe, come from? And then finally, is there coffee grown in Israel? Israel's always one of my peak interest parts around the world, so we're going to touch on that as well. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell before we get started. That way you and I can stay connected and build a relationship together. And that way we can learn how to shop the grocery store on these grocery discovery videos. I get so excited about teaching you as much as I can about the grocery store so that you can be confident in the kitchen, confident in your health, and most importantly, confident in understanding how much God loves you. He loves you so much. He's loved you from the beginning of time and he has an everlasting love and it doesn't matter what you have done, he still loves you. Now, let's head into the coffee aisle. Well, there are numerous coffees in the coffee aisle. It stretches way down there and then it goes all the way down there until we run into the teas and we're gonna talk about that also on another video. So make sure you're subscribed. So should we have coffee? Is it legal to have coffee? Is it healthy to have coffee? The answer is yes. Here are the seven reasons why coffee is okay to drink. Now make sure you watch this video to, so that I can show you which coffees you should buy. That's just as important as the health benefits. Now coffee has antioxidants. Antioxidants are what go on a tour throughout your whole body to get rid of free radicals. If you're not familiar with that, I teach about that in the Treasures of Healthy Living DVD series. That's also an additional part to the Treasures of Healthy Living Bible study. What? You didn't know I was an author? You might want to go check out my books. So there are seven health benefits to drinking coffee. Now mind you, almost every food in the grocery store, specifically every food that God created, has gone through the vilify you know, years where it's like, oh, that's horrible, it's going to kill you, and then it gains grace again. It's like, oh, wow, look, it's healthy. It always comes down to the three principles that I teach over and over and over. Number one, is coffee bean a food that God created? Put it in the comments down below. What do you think your answer is? I'll tell you my answer, and the answer is yes, it is a food God created. Principle number two, eat the food as close to the way God designed it. Are all of these coffees close to the way God designed it? No, <laughs> so that's why we need to know what to buy. Principle number three, don't let any food become an addiction or a God in your life. You may say, Annette, that's kind of extreme. Well, put in the comments down below, can you go without coffee if you have to? Ah, we're identifying a few addictions, right? And also along with principle number three is, do you need coffee to live, to survive, to get up in the morning? And if so, we need to look at other determinants in your health that might be causing problems that you're having to take so many stimulants just to function. So we need to identify, is coffee just a pleasurable drink? You can go without it if you need to or is it a necessary stimulant? And that is a caution, a red flag. So let's look at the seven reasons why coffee can be healthy, but I'm not talking drinking 10 cups a day. <laughs> no, not at all. So reason number one, because of the antioxidant value in coffee, it's huge for helping to prevent many cancers. This is great because we have people who deal with, actually, let me just tell you, I've just been at this conference and um, one of the speakers I was listening to is sharing how cancer is now a one in two you know, rate of getting cancer. So between every two people, one of you is going to get cancer. Now, that's scary enough. We don't want that. And we protect our body by giving our body the foods God designed. They are natural, they create the T killer cells, they do everything to work in our body to protect us from the environment, <laughs> okay? So we really need to know what foods to eat and what foods not to eat. 
So because of the high antioxidant value, it actually helps prevent colon cancer. Now you may hear some naturalists who will use coffee enemas to help pull the toxins out of the body. I'm not going to talk about that here. There's a lot of stuff out on the internet, just, but just realize there's a reason because of the way it attracts heavy metals, it attracts toxins and helps to remove them. We're not talking enemas on this coffee station, <laughs> that's for sure. So that's really one big reason to consider it. Reason number two, according to John Hopkins and Harvard, it helps to prevent heart disease. Yeah, who would have thought? Because when it was a villain, it was like, no, it'll kill you. But now we're learning the actual coffee beans that God created help prevent heart disease. Okay, reason number three, it helps with preventing type two diabetes in how it helps to metabolize glucose. Hey, that's reason enough to start drinking coffee. Reason number four, it reduces depression. Now there's a caution here. Some people, it does not work well with. If it's causing anxiety in your life, then no, you are not able to drink coffee. Not all of us can enjoy the health benefits of every food God created. And so there's gonna be some of you watching, you're like, Annette, I don't, I don't drink coffee, I can't handle it. That's fine, just realize, just because it's the food God created doesn't mean you have to have it. But for those of you who handle it well, and it doesn't cause anxiety, doesn't cause an irregular heartbeat, then actually it helps to reduce depression. Reason number five is it lowers inflammation. <laughs> who would have thought that one? Reason number six, it helps with mental clarity. Now we're all familiar with that mental pick-me-up or that mental perk-up. We already know it does that. And then reason number seven <laughs> is it helps to reduce liver cancer. So these, if you think about it, your colon and your liver, they are totally trying to work overtime to detoxify your body. So anything we can do to improve their effectiveness, then we are giving our body a bonus. So if you drink one to two cups per day and you buy a good quality coffee, you might be able to experience some of those benefits. Hey, it's quiz time. When was the word cup of joe first termed? Was it during the Civil War? World War I or World War II? Put your answers in the comments down below. This term was coined by the sailors and the Secretary of the Navy under Woodrow Wilson. Okay, da ding that's a time period. You should know the answer already. They, what he wanted, he wanted the, the sailors to have better morality. Maybe we should think about this for today. So he wanted no prostitution on the Navy bases. Well, that seems pretty smart. He also wanted more chaplains, so he hired a lot more chaplains. I think that's a fantastic idea. I think we should do that today. Instead, today we're firing all the chaplains. And then reason number three, he wanted to reduce and ban the use of alcohol. Imagine if our sailors had less prostitution, more chaplains, and no alcohol. Wow, <laughs> that would be quite a, quite a Navy force that we would have. So his name, the Secretary of the Navy, was Joseph Daniels. And so the sailors coined the phrase, I'm gonna go have a cup of Joseph Daniels. It soon became shortened to just, I'm gonna go have a cup of Joe. Because that was the terminology, because coffee sales went skyrocketing on the Navy basis because they couldn't drink their alcohol anymore. So have you had a cup of Joe lately? Now, what about Israel? Is coffee grown in Israel? This is always what I look up. Actually, it started in 1948. That's a key year, isn't it? After they became a state and recognized by everyone. So they started growing coffee. It took many decades to perfect it. It's really only perfected in the last couple decades and they make a fabulous coffee. Yet 45% of coffee that is drank in Israel is imported from Switzerland. Imagine that. So did they drink coffee in biblical days in Israel? Probably not because it doesn't grow well in the land of Israel. Did they import it? Possibly. But what did they drink the most was tea. So be sure and watch for that next video on the health benefits of tea and we're going to talk about it and how that applies to Israeli history. Some facts about coffee is it actually loses some of its character, aroma, and taste during transport. So we need to consume it within the first couple months to experience the best beans to get that special flavor and it needs to be consumed within a couple weeks after roasting. So that date to use by on the bottom of the package is very important if you want the best cup of coffee. Probably, I would guess, 75% of people have never really tasted truly rich 
originally flavored coffee because we we have so many coffees that have been on the shelf for years or they've been in your pantry for years that you haven't really experienced the robustness of a delicious freshly roasted cup of coffee. One of the obvious considerations is to watch for flavors that have been added. So sometimes you will see vanilla flavor, you will see a caramel flavor, cocoa flavor, lots of different flavors that have been added to coffee. And if you want that flavor, add it yourself. That way you know exactly what you're getting in your coffee. Now, although I'm not a coffee drinker, I do love the smell of the beans, the coffee beans. And yes, they are a food God designed for us. So you notice here we have rich flavor with mild fruit notes. It's not that fruit has been added, it's just that's how they've grown that plant to have that flavor. So this is whole bean coffee. So a couple tips on drinking coffee is number one, we do need it to be organic. Organic coffee is gonna guarantee that we are not getting the pesticides, the fungicides that happen on the plants as they are being dried. You should find in your grocery store several options for organic. There's a couple different brands here. We've got the Chameleon, we've got the Truck Stop Organics. There's probably more here I'm not seeing, but definitely organic is your best option. And then our second option is we want the bean and that you um, grind it up yourself and make the fresh coffee. This brand here, as we can see, it is certified organic. It is a whole bean. This should deliver a, a really robust flavor that should be just the perfect wake me up in the morning. Plus the aroma should be enough to, to get your day off to a great start. Now it is saying it has notes of ripe cherry and milk chocolate. That should not be an added ingredient. It should just be the way they are growing the coffee. So as it says, it's just coffee, but the way they are describing the flavor is that it might have a milk chocolate flavor or a ripe cherry. Now, if you're looking for those added flavors, be sure and add it yourself and not buy it in the package. Well, that's it for coffee today. I am so grateful for this store. This is Deerberg's Family Markets. It is in the St. Louis region and they're also in Illinois. They are just a great family store to shop from. I always love supporting family stores versus the bigger chains because you get better service. I love shopping family stores anytime I can. I love supporting families that started a business in a town to support that town and those that give back. So the Deerbergs family is totally that and they have a beautiful store in the St. Louis and Illinois region. So be sure and check it out next time you're in St. Louis or Illinois. In the meantime, be sure and check out biblicalnutritionacademy.com. That's where we have all of our courses on how to eat, how to pray, how to fast, the treasures of healthy living courses there. So much to offer you to help you learn God's recipe for excellent health. So I'll see you there at biblicalnutritionacademy.com. If you're wondering about the treasures of healthy living Bible study, go to thebiblicalnutritionist.com. And the video series will be linked there as well. In the meantime, I can't wait to read your comments. What's your favorite coffee? How often do you have coffee? What's your favorite time of day to enjoy coffee? Remember, there are some cautions. Don't buy non-organic. And if you're pregnant, there might be some issues with that. Be sure and consult with your doctor. And if you have anxiety, then I would not recommend coffee. And if you stay up all night, don't drink coffee, all right? There are other ways to stay healthy. Thanks for watching.